let's walk through the third one in the series the question is find all lonely numbers in the array as per the question we are given an array of integers and we need to identify lonely numbers how do we do that a number is called a lonely number if it appears only once in the array also there should be no element with that should be present in the array which is either equal to element plus one or element minus one we need to return all such lonely numbers that are present in the array also the order is not mandatory uh, it can be in any order or any permutation will work i'll walk you through the examples that are specified here by the presentation and i'll also talk about the algorithm to go about it so let's quickly move on to the ppt and let's get started find all lonely numbers in the array lead code 2150 so let's reiterate the definition of a lonely number a, a number is a lonely number when it appears only once and no adjacent element x minus 1 or x plus 1 should appear in the array so let's try and understand and derive the solution by a slightly longer example the elements are 10 6 5 100 8 100 what we are going to do i'm going to create a map wherein the key would be equal to the value or the elements value that are we are presently iterating over so it would be the element the key would be the element itself and the value of the map would be the frequency because we need to identify whether it appear only once or not and let's get started let's build this map appropriately so let's do it uh, 10 only occurred once so the frequency of 10 would be 1 6 only occurs once the frequency of 6 will be 1 Five only occurs once; it, its frequency will be one. Hundred occurs twice; its frequency will be two. And eight also occurs once; its frequency will be one. So let's get started now. Since we have appropriately built in the map, what I'll do? I'll iterate over all the entries in the map one by one. So let's start the iteration. The first element that I see is ten comma one. I'll check whether the frequency happens to be greater than one. If it does, I'll skip it. It's not. I'll look for the next constraint. I'll extract the current element, the value. Uh, it is ten, and I'll check whether nine or eleven are present in the map. Both of them are not present in the array. So what do I do? I simply add it to my result. So ten gets added to the result because both the conditions of lonely number have been satisfied. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see a six comma one. I'll check the frequency. Frequency happens to be one. It's not greater than one. First constraint is met. Next, I'll go for. Uh, I'll check for the second constraint. I'll check for five comma seven. If either of both of them are present in this map, then I'll simply skip it. Five is present in the map. Five key is present. That that as a result, I simply skip this element. It won't be part of the answer. Let's proceed ahead. Next, we see is five comma one. What is the frequency? The frequency is one. The first constraint is met. Let's look out for the second constraint. I look for four comma six. Either of them, if present in the map, I'll skip it. Six is present in the map. I have to skip this entry. Let's proceed ahead. Next is eight comma one. The frequency is one. First constraint is met. I look for out for seven comma nine. Either of them present, I'll add or uh, I'll skip it. Both of them are not present. I'll add it to my answer. Eight gets added. The last element that I see is hundred comma two. The frequency is two. The first constraint is violated. Uh, the answer is happens to be ten comma four, eight, ten comma eight, and this is what is expected. So let's quickly walk through the coding section as well, and I'll exactly do the same steps as I've talked here. Let's start the iteration. I'm building the map. And again, let's iterate through the entries of the map. I'll check if the frequency happens to be greater than one. I'll skip it. Otherwise, I check if my map contains key dot entry minus one or key dot entry plus one. I'll skip it. Otherwise, I'll add it to the result. In the end, I simply return the result. Let's try this up. Accepted. The time complexity of this approach is order of n. This brings me to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead, and stay tuned for more updates on coding decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question.